What up, what up, what up? What's going on? Welcome back to another edition of the Bad Podcast. Brad and Dwayne. Brad, brother, what are we talking about today, my friend? Today we're going to talk about mental toughness and ownership. And I got a quote. All mm. strength starts within. Let's talk about Ooh, it. All strength starts within. I like that, man. Let's get into it. Hey, good job, guys. Good job. Mental battles. Mental battles. what it look like what it be like what it do man back in here another bad podcast brad and wayne and we have a guest this is actually repeat offender man we got you are our first repeat guest man so super kudos to you my brother for making that trademark but brad man who we got with us today this is a friend of ours, Mike Dalla. Um, he's out of the Colorado area, or at least he was. Are you still out in Colorado? I am, yep. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Man, introduce yourself, Mike. Reintroduce yourself. Take it away, man. Yeah, I'm Mike Idella. I'm a performance coach, live in Boulder, Colorado, lifetime athlete, and excited to be here today with you fellas. Yeah. Um, hey, so this is this is prime time right now, and, and you know it's it's mental health America or it's mental health awareness month, and um, you know that kind of aligns with everything that you do, everything that we do. Um, and I've been kind of keeping a, an eye on your social media, and I know you just had a, a forum or or a conference recently, um, and there was a handful of pillars that kind of stuck out to me that you talked about at your conference. Um, one being the language. All right, can you touch on language when it comes to mental health, mental uh, mental strength and uh, the, the the relationship it has with fitness and, and overall growth. Yeah, I think there's two ways we can talk, and one is in our head, and one's out loud. And we talk a lot more to ourselves in our head. And like any relationship, we want to make sure that the language we speak is landing with the goals or objectives that we have. And it can be easier with the voice in our head because it's not as receptive. And so developing that positive relationship with the voice in your head you can name it if you'd like um because it pops up often and so figuring out what is the perfect what's the ideal relationship that you can have with that language and what are some words that serve you and don't serve you and developing you know kind of boundaries with how you speak with yourself just like i'm sure y'all do with your friends or your family you don't just go around you know like cursing at people or maybe some <laughs> negative language because not appropriate um, it's the same thing within our heads and we got to hold ourselves accountable, take ownership over that mental language model. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, being in the fitness industry and, and you being a, an ultra marathon runner, you know, you've done the long, the long package and everything. Um, you have a lot of conversation and I got to ask, man, do you got a name for your in, internal, internal <laughs> voice? I don't No, I don't. I've, I have a, um, a name f- for like an older version of myself, which I'll call like my loyal soldier. Um, and so that was, you know, maybe someone, some mental model that served me at a certain point in my life. But um, I've since sometimes either remind him that, you know, he's retired, he uh, served his duty within my, with my headspace, and um, I don't need his services anymore. And, and that could just be things like when I was in high school and I get motivated from, a girlfriend cheating on me or something like that, or like a lot of hate. Um, I don't like to necessarily pull motivation from those types of places anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like wow. that quite a bit. And, you know, Dwayne and I have touched on that. You know, I played, I played hockey for a lot of years and I was a goaltender. So I, I was in, in uh, you know, a lot of solitude moments where I, mean, I just strike up a conversation with myself and sometimes it would be in my head. Sometimes I would actually start talking out loud and, you know, five minutes would go by and I'd be like, Anybody watching me right now? But <laughs> man, when it comes to when it comes to fitness and, and, and growth and all, all the things that we preach on the daily, um, you know, a lot of the things that uh, you know 
that you you see uh, externally, man, they all start, you know, with the conversation that you have about yourself. And, you know, a lot of people are tough on themselves, too. And I want you to kind of touch on that. So, like, if I'm doing something and I fall short of my goal, right, um, you know, I'm the first one to kind of put myself down and I'm harsh with this, with some of those words that I, I preach to myself. But how do you kind of how do you kind of get away from um, that those negative remarks um, and just you know, stick to the empowering, you know, you know, you know, self-empowerment. How do you, how do you uh, make that, that shift? Yeah. I, I think there's not to go off on too much of a tangent, but I, in some worlds, I don't think you guys do this as much. There can just be like positive affirmations all day, every day. And I think those are great if they're backed up by actions. And so like confidence comes in my opinion, from doing things that you say you're going to do. And if you want confidence, then you got to pick appropriate goals. And so I'm running a bunch of long races this summer and it's not appropriate for me to say, I'm going to win that race, right? Because it's unrealistic. Like, and if I have that as my goal, then I'm setting myself up to fail. And so figuring out what's the appropriate challenge for the skill that I have, and then making that the goal. Then if I don't achieve it on that specific day, I mean, that's okay. There's probably factors for that, that then I can look back at, say, okay, well, I didn't maybe optimize my sleep or my nutrition plan was off or um, I didn't stretch as much or maybe I miscalculated what my goal was. And now I have, a, you know, a mark that I can look at in the future. So, yeah, I'm, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, I think that was spot on. And, and you know, one of the other pillars that I recognized in one of your posts is ownership. And I think that kind of ties in with that. Like, you know, you're going to take ownership of what your goals are. But on the on the flip side, like if you don't achieve everything that you said you're going to achieve, you take ownership of that. And then you you kind of adjust, you know, you adapt like, OK, what did, what did I do or where did I fall short? Maybe in my preparation phase, you know, maybe it was the fueling. Maybe it was, uh, you know, I had a, a bigger dream and a bigger goal than I um you know, maybe it was too big, you know, but that's, that's all part of ownership. And I, I saw that was one of the other pillars. Um, so yeah, yeah. L language ownership, um, a couple other pillars, you know, that, that, that really struck, uh, stuck out to me. Um, one was the ability to express gratitude, you know, always tying into mental health, always tying into mental strength, because, you know, in the, in the worlds and in the industries that we come from, not enough people are grateful for the opportunity that they have, you know, like just waking up in the morning, putting, putting your two feet on the ground. I, I say it every single week to our clients, just by doing that, you're separating yourself from 95% of the world, like 95% of the world can or won't do, um, you know, the things that we're doing and just expressing gratitude. Um, can you touch on, can you touch on that, that, that pillar of, of, of gratitude? Yeah. Yes. There's this cool study done by the VIA Institute of Character. Um, I believe it's in Pennsylvania where they studied all these different attributes of character, like hope, courage, love, honesty, and what far above increased individuals sense of well-being was gratitude, like really feeling grateful for your life. And so that's challenge that can be challenging to do if you don't have that great relationship with your head and you're comparing yourself to external sources or other people. Um, because you're that's a losing battle. You're oh, there's always going to be someone more successful, more fit, more rich, more whatever than you. Um, but comparing to the, you can really only compare to the effort that you put out. And so, um, one exercise that I love for gratitude um, is a type of gratitude journal. But instead of just writing down, I'm grateful for the sun or my body or my family. Like those things are great, but they don't land as much because it don't. It's hard to take ownership over the action. And so it's called the four W's. And it's what went well and why. And so write down three things each day that went well and why they went well. And the why aspect helps you take ownership over the positive things that are going on in your life. And so if you continue to reinforce that, then you start to take that ownership and can develop the current or the confidence that things are going to go well based on the actions you take. So like, you know, for example, this podcast with Brad and Dwayne went well because I went out for a workout beforehand. I was hydrated. I got a good night's sleep and I was able to be fully present, you know, on the podcast versus um, I'm grateful for the guys inviting me on the podcast. 
Uh, wow. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's that's deep, man. And I don't know what happened to Dwayne, but that's all right. But uh, um, what went well and why? I like that. So the four dubs, the four W's, I'm going to start I'm going to start uh, uh, implicating that to my life because, you know, I think I think when, you know, your podcast, for example, man, this was the elusive podcast. And maybe we should switch <laughs> up the title because uh, there, there was a greater power at work that didn't want us to do this for some odd reason. But, um, you know, Mike, you're you're a breath of fresh air, man. I love talking to you because every time I talk to you or see one of your posts, it's it's you know it's everything that I value. You know, it's everything that Dwayne values. Um, but uh, you know, what went well and why? You know, that's a, that's just a deeper than uh, hey, the podcast went well. You know, and uh, I like that. Um, one of the other values, man, or one of the other pillars was values, and this is something that I bring up on the daily because not everybody has the same values as you and I. Not everybody wants to go for that long distance run. Not everybody wants to lift three hundred seventy five pounds over their <laughs> over their head with one arm. Man, I I saw you out there. I see you out there. Um, but not everybody has those same values. Um, how, look, how, I want to I ask this in a proper way, and I don't want to offend anybody. Like, how, how, do you, uh, how do you find or how do you get over that hump of uh, finding values that provide value? I guess that's the, the most proper way to say it. How do you, how do you discover values that provide value? like a, a good return. How do you yeah. do that? Yeah. I mean, I think there's many different frameworks for that, right? That's like, I always equate mindset coaching with training in the gym. Like there's many ways to get an up stronger upper body. What are, there's different kinds of exercises that would do it. And I think val I view values as like a guideline for my life. And so I used to think that like, I want everything to be possible. And I didn't like the idea of boundaries because I felt that it was limiting but the analogy I'll use is like if we never have ever heard of the game basketball and we take, you know, seven other people and we all go to this court and there's no lines on the court and there's no goals and there's no ball. Um, when I give us a ball and I say, OK, play, we might, you know, kick it around at each other, throw it at each other. We don't really we won't have like the best time. Like, you know, we might make something up. But then if I come and I bring a ref, I put lines on the court, I separate you into teams, I put up goals, I put a ton of rules I have someone reinforce those rules. I put time. I've just put tons of restrictions on us. But then within those restrictions, we get to play the game and we know what's allowed and what's not allowed. So then we can learn and have and like, you know, see how we can improve over time. And so I view values as the same way. Um, I like to identify them based off of activities, again, versus like values like hope or love or honesty. Those are more ethereal and, and they're great characteristics, but they're hard to track. Like, was I honest today? Like, yeah, kind of, but or like, how was my love today? Um, and so I like this exercise called the deathbed values where I view myself, you know, many years from now on my deathbed. And I do this as a visualization where I close my eyes and I think about if I lived the perfect life, what activity buckets did I put my time into? And, you know, when I think about that, my five are quality time with friends and family, quality being the key word there, um, my health and my wellness. So anything that goes in that can go into that bucket, my business and the impact that I can have on the world. So like things like this, um, peak experiences, flow states, states of all adventures. Like when you're on the top of that mountain and you're looking out like, holy cow, I can't believe I just did that. Or you know, something like that, like crossing a finish line, like peak experience and then learning. So anything where I'm learning and I strive for all of the actions that I take every single day, no matter what fit into those five. And if they don't, then I'm essentially out of bounds. And then I get penalized internally by not being, not living within integrity. And what that shows up as I might struggle with my self-worth or my confidence or different things like that. And so that's my kind of take on values. And um, yeah, thanks for asking. I love talking about values. <laughs> yeah. Holy smoke. So that, that, uh, <laughs> wow. Boundaries, man. Like rules. That, and, that like, was, that was a lot. I, yeah, I, that, <laughs> that was, yeah. that, you, you packed a lot of information in that yeah. little, the analogy and everything. That was brilliant, man. Um, not, not to cut you off, Brad, but you've been going. I've been letting you go now. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but no, I want to go back to the ownership thing, man, because I actually experienced something this weekend. Uh, Brad, no, I went to a, a bodybuilding competition uh, to support, you know, my team and uh, and, and another uh, young man I was working out with. And so after the show, the guy that I, I, I work out with, he got second place. And uh, there was this guy, man, that all the way up until the show, he was posting on Instagram. He was so ready. You know, he had his countdown and and he didn't make it out of his class. And so the friend I went to the gym with, uh, he said, man, when we were backstage, the first thing out of his mouth was my coach messed me up. Zero ownership. Like he literally the first words out of his mouth was my coach messed me up. He didn't uh, coach me properly in peak week and he was throwing the blame on someone else man and and that that's what that's what clicked whenever you said that man because i was like ain't no way you know what i mean like even if that's the case like there there's a part that i have to play like that like i would much rather say hey you know didn't bring my best package or we you know what i mean but no it was a he he messed his is he fault you know <laughs> but but that but you know and and that goes back to what, what we talked about earlier man just taking that ownership being able to uh you know when things go wrong man and uh and speaking of things going wrong like this podcast has been crazy like this must this is this probably going to like go viral because everything's been messing up like my camera's going off you know because he was like what you, you I, I was about to change your uh your your, your thing to what went wrong today <laughs> <laughs> that list was longer like right now man but no i just want to jump in man on that because uh, that was something I saw firsthand, man, and and it was it was disheartening, uh, you know, just 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 coming from the perspective of an athlete, man, and you know, you have an athlete coach relationship, uh, but you know, uh, I never, you know, Brad, check me if you ever hear me talk like that. I never want to be the person to point the finger at someone else or you know, uh, blame somebody else for something, you know, that that I, I had, even if it, even if. Even if I was a part of the project and the project failed, I would much rather say, hey, guys, that, that's on me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, that's a tangent, but I just had to get that out there. I, it was burning in my heart. <laughs> it, it's so true. And, like, um, I'll give two examples of, of that as well. Like, I, I was coaching um, a kiddos flag football team this season. And my first practice, bring every, all the kids together. They're seven, eight years old. They're, like, first time playing flag football. They're super excited. I'm like, the number one theme of this year is encouragement. Someone's going to miss a pass. Someone's going to miss a flag. We are going over to encourage that person right away because they don't mean to miss the flag. You guys ever try purposely to drop a ball? You ever try to, to miss something? No. So if someone in your life comes over and encourages you, is that going to make it easier for you in the future? Or is if they get on you, is that going to make it easier? And they're like, encouragement's better. I'm like, great. And so we went undefeated. And they are wow. amazing, encouraging each other, positive effort. You know, someone miss a ball, it happens. Like, you maybe don't prep perfect for peak week. Like, it happens. People are trying their best, I think. And, um, you know, the, what I think is really difficult to take ownership is, like, in interpersonal relationships. Mm. You know, partner, And, you know, if you explain in your way, in again, in your head, the way that you would like something done and it doesn't get done, in that kind of way, then you can talk, I don't know what to do. What's wrong with you? I didn't explain it in a way that made sense to her, him, whoever. And so let me look at that, see how I can exchange it again, or I can explain it in the future. That hey, Mike, 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 get off my toes, bro. Get off my toes. <laughs> Get off of that! Is, that's, I, ma that's marriage, man. Like you literally <laughs> in your mind, you think you told them something, and when they don't do it, then you get mad, and you've never communicated it, bro. Get off my toes, man. Uh, <laughs> I, think that's so good. I think everyone listening to this podcast or watching this can resonate with that. <laughs> that's so good. Not that's, me. that's the practice. Your press perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh, his internet. <laughs> <laughs> man, no, that's 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 so good, man. So hey, you said you had two examples of that. You told us the flag football. What's the second example yeah, of that? No, the second was the wife or the oh okay. All right. All right. It, <laughs> it, that was uh, it was good though. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna jump in on that flag football story because you know, as a young person, um, if you tell somebody to encourage somebody else as a young person. Like they're not um, 
they're not all all washed out quite yet, you know, as far as like, you know, their, their, their ability to empower somebody else. So, um, you know, they're going to go up to that, that friend that missed the flag or missed the ball or whatever, whatever. Um, and they're going to encourage that person. But the longer you, that you go through life, and this isn't for everybody, but for a lot of people, it's hard to encourage others when you don't encourage yourself or when you don't, you know, it's hard to support others when you don't even support yourself. And I think that's, I think that's a, a token to take from this podcast. Like, you know, all three of us are, are people that encourage ourselves and empower ourselves because, you know, we've went through the trials and tribulations. We've, we've done the thing. Um, and we're able to coach others and, and encourage others to be their best because we've, we've gone through that. And a lot of people in, in today's society, in today's world, haven't gone through those hard times and they're not willing to encourage other people. Mike's over there like, oh man, they got dogs barking and hey man, don't no, no worry. This is real raw. <laughs> no, you're good. My neighbor came over and wanted to take my dog out with his dog okay. and they're barking and everything. <laughs> I agree 100%. What went wrong today? <laughs> you lose the right? I need to keep the, I can't do podcasts in my living room without headphones with my dog just running free. I need to, I'm not train enough to go into the room. So I got to put her in the crate in the bedroom. And that's on me. Not not on him for coming over, timing, anything. So I apologize. Right, right. Hey, <laughs> you take ownership. He's taking ownership, oh, bro. Oh, He's showing oh, examples. Right. <laughs> yeah. and Mike, if I could have you on the pod, if we could have you on the podcast once a month, man, a everything that you say is so refreshing, um, not That's just really to good. us, but to the viewers, man. Like, um, I, I, I know this, this podcast is elusive as it was. Um, I think a lot of the listeners today are going to get so many uh, good nuggets. Um, you know, the encouragement thing, the, the, um, you know, the ownership thing, the values, you know, that, that deathbed values, man. Like, I think I'm going to start in, put, in putting that every single day because I think sometimes we get we get lost in the hustle and bustle, you know, and, and we forget about those buckets or those silos or however you want to look at it. Um, I think we forget about that sometimes and we forget about the importance of like, you know, the, 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 for example, man, the good quality time, um, man, this kind of breaks my heart even thinking about it. But uh, just the other day, you know, my son wanted to do something outside and like I was texting or emailing or doing something on my phone, you know, um, and I kind of like brushed him off and he was OK with it. Right. He was OK with it. And that's what breaks my heart with with, with this whole uh, circumstance, because he shouldn't be OK with that. Right. But, um, you know, just that quality time. So. Just just from hearing you talk and having this podcast today, cell phones going down, back to quality time, man, and uh, kind of a wake-up call today. Uh, just a lot of good stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a there's a guideline, right? Like, you're going to get out of bounds sometimes, but knowing, hey, I'm out of bounds, let me make some adjustments and come back. I, yes. um, I, I like to look at – so you go back into time and even a calendar. I used to, like, really not love the calendar, but now I worship my calendar – and I look at it on Sunday and say, okay, what are all the things that I need to do for my business? What the, what's the amount of quality time with my friends and family that feels good for me? And then I can like, I can literally just schedule it in. So that way I don't feel bad if I need to spend more time, you know, learning something and I don't get to go out to the, you know, dinners or the, or the other, ob you know, things I might get invited to or whatever. And so it can be nice to reflect, look back at your week. You can get really granular with it. Like I have some clients have spreadsheets and they track all their time in their buckets, but then they can see, oh, if I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling like I'm not like connected to other people, well, let me look at my quality time with friends and family. Okay. It's kind of down. So that makes sense. What are the actions that I can take to get back in bounce? That's fire. <laughs> get out of bounds, get in bounds. That's right. That's right. All right, B, you got anything else? No, sir. I'm going to – All right. Mike, man. <laughs> I know, man. So, Mike, um, as before we get ready to transition to the last part, man, anything you want to leave with the folks, uh, any last last words before we get into our little, our little segment at the end? Uh, I would just say it's a practice. You know, like we're all laughing on this podcast because we all get out of bounds, and that is a normal thing. Like it happens to everyone. But creating your own boundaries and your own system is so helpful because if not, then you don't know where those boundaries are and you don't know if you're in or out. And that can create like anxiety of, of not 
getting it. And then because you don't have that, you look at other people and you maybe judge other people's on Instagram or their highlight reels and feel bad about yourself. And so um, if you resonate with any of that, make your own boundaries, listen to the deathbed values again and create your own. And um, it'll really, I think, move the needle for how you feel about the actions you're taking in your life. I love it. I love it, man. Good stuff, brother. All right. So we're going to this last section here. Uh, it's called Do You Know or Did You Know? You actually answered this the first time. So okay. I don't know if you remember your question or not uh, <laughs> uh, or your, your response or not, but we're going to do it again. It could be a new one or it could be the same one because I don't remember it. So you could get away with it and I wouldn't even know. So we're going to play this quick video and we'll ask you right here. All right, this is a segment called Do You Know or Did You Know? So what is a do you know or did you know moment about Mike? What's something that you haven't maybe said publicly or maybe haven't said before that people wouldn't normally know if they don't follow you on the gram or wherever? Um, well, last time I talked about my middle toe. and then uh, middle toe, I do I remember that. I had this Morton's toe. And that actually, as I'm running, I started getting some knee pain. And it's kind of because of the foot padding, like the way my foot pads are. And so I saw someone in Boulder and they kind of helped me understand that, which was cool, but I was super embarrassed from that and haven't talked about it. But another one is that I'm a quarter Ecuadorian. Mm. People don't know, they don't know that. So that was the, the did you know for today? Nice. I love quarter it. Ecuadorian. I like it. Mm -hmm. Are you about to say something? Mike, what's your Instagram handle, man? Uh, my business is the dot offense, helping people live life on offense, uh, taking action versus living defensively in the backseat, being more reactive. Uh, and then my personal handle is Mike dot Idella. Good deal. Man, make sure you all the spots. Uh, and if you're watching the podcast, uh, well, actually watching the YouTube right now, if you're watching right now, today's word is boundaries. If you put that in the comment section, we're going to randomly pick somebody to send them some bad gear. But the only way you know is if you watch it this far in the podcast. So you hear the word, you, you put the word boundaries in the comments and uh, we'll randomly pick one person to send some uh, some bad swag, whether it's a headband or a t-shirt, whatever it is. But you have to put boundaries in the comments right here. So Brad, man, close us out, brother. I'm going to go off what Mike said, man. Get out of bonds to get in bonds. Hey, I'm going to say take the ball out. <laughs> <laughs>